what's the result? So he had brothers and sisters who were not as special as him. Some of them were raised, but they never became like him. So when you look at the, some of the lamas, their upbringing, their genetic material, if it was just that, how come they're so special? I mean, none of their family members are that special. They come of very, out of very, usually their parents are illiterate. Yes, they're put in a monastery, but they're also father of Don't think there's some kind of magical education. No, they usually are put in their own room and they have one attendant and they get beaten up more than anyone else. Seriously, I mean, I, I've seen it with my own eyes, some of the monasteries, the monks, the, the, the lamas got beaten much more because there's a responsibility, right? So they get beaten. Tibetans, until very recently, they used to beat their children very much. It was just part of their education, as it used to be in the West. So how come you have someone like the Dalai Lama? So for me, it's like, if I had done what the Dalai Lama had done over many lifetimes, I would be special, but I didn't. I'm just ordinary, I never got out of my afflictions, I'm just stuck in the same way, so I'm ordinary, and you know, even though I think pedagogically my circumstances were much more conducive, and nothing. Whereas with His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, you know, look at his life, so I was like, oh my god, that's the that reason you became a nun. Yeah, but compare myself to His Holiness, it's no. a joke. <laughs> I'm just saying that, I'm saying that, I'm just comparing, I mean, it's like a joke. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, to me, it's like the fact that you can have someone like the Dalai Lama, unless he practiced before, when did he do it? When did he become like that? Unless he had many lifetimes before, where it became greater and greater and greater, how do you have someone like that? So if you look at some of the Lamas, when you get to know them, you're like, wow, they are special. How do you become like that? Unless you take many lifetimes. So that's for me another way I look at it like they must have practiced before and before and before and before and over many lifetimes, you know, like, like cheese. The, 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 if, you, if you put it in the right kind of uh, environment, it becomes greater and greater and greater or wine or something, you know, the right kind of ingredients and it grows better and better. I mean, I don't want to compare the llamas with cheese, but I'm just saying that over time they become greater and greater. So in one lifetime, it's impossible to become like that. They're usually born already special. How do you have children like Mozart and... Yeah, that's what I tried to say. Right? I mean, on a worldly... Yeah. As a mother, sometimes you see your children and like... They're so special. Like, what I get this stuff? Yeah, here? their parents like... are totally ordinary and they're these special children. Again, if you have previous life, that explains it. That would make much more sense. So I'm just saying, those are some of the reasons that personally work for me. And as I say, if there is no future life, I'd be happy. Actually, I'd be happier that we're in future life. I mean, gosh, again? <laughs> be born, I mean, nine months in that terrible, unless I'm not a born chicken, and be like, you know, in a chicken egg for like, I don't know how long, but let's assume I'm a reborn in a human, I don't want to be in that place for nine months again. I mean, if you were to put me into that space, ah, oh, terrible. We have suffered from romantic ideas of the womb, but seriously, well, as, maybe if I have single, single womb, I'm not a twin, maybe a little easier, but still imagine, I mean, it's terrible in that fluid. Ooh. What's that? Someone's fluid. I don't even know that person. I've never met them, but I'm so soaked in their fluid, right? Upside down. Isn't it upside down? Yeah. Upside down, right? No food. It's all like kind of goes directly in. I mean, who likes that? And like at the whim of this person, she's stressed out. You're stressed out because the stress hormones, of course, enter your body. Thank you very much. So anyway, I mean, think about this. These eight months, it's terrible. If you had to spend a day in a womb, would anyone volunteer? A day in a, in a woman's fluid? Sure. You like? I don't know why you, you have such a bad idea about the, the whole experience. It sounds wonderful to me. If I were to put you in a room where you cannot move, like I put you in a water tank, in a dark water tank, <laughs> and you are absorbed. Me now, but when you are a fetus, yes, that's, that's, that's what's best for you. It works best for you. You grow up inside. Yeah, it may be best for you physically, you but I don't know how comfortable that is. <laughs> I'm not talking about physically, you're right, absolutely. That's the best way for you to survive. Nature has definitely physically taken care of it. I'm just talking about whether I want it or not. <laughs> oh my God, right? It sounds terrifying. And then you're born. <laughs> 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 oh my God, absolutely.
upside down. And what is the first thing they do? Good Take you by your feet? <laughs> this is how you start your life. You start your life by screaming. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but seriously, I don't look forward to that again. So this part, okay. And then, can't eat, can't sleep, I can't, can't walk, learn everything from scratch. High school, again? <laughs> Puberty, again? Oh no. I mean, seriously, everything in this lifetime, if we're reborn again, again, and again, and again. I mean, think of all the stages of our life. Yeah, I mean, there's some great parts, but there's a lot of stuff I don't want to go. I wish, at least with memory, I'd be born. I don't make them same mistakes again, because, of course, I make the same mistakes again. Yeah. I mean, think about it again. I, I'm just saying, I don't want to be reborn. Seriously, it's not a, like, like I want to be, I'm a Buddhist, so now I, I, it's kind of fancy to believe in future lives. Actually, when I came to Dharamsala, the first time I came to Dharamsala, I learned about Buddhism. Because my mom learned about Buddhism. She, um, no, she, she believed in, in future lives and stuff, right, when I grew up. And she read these books by someone, someone who talks about past lives, uh, Shirley MacLaine. Uh -huh. And there was also a Jewish, an Israeli woman who did past life rece uh, recession in Germany, uh, and she went there. What's her Margot name? Now. Maybe it's her, yes. I forget her name, my mom used to always go there. Uh, it was like a teenager, and I'm my mom, she's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> right? And when I arrived in Dharamsala, and everyone talked about past and future lives, I decided I'm not gonna believe in this. This is ridiculous, I'm not going along with this. I'm, I'm different. So when I arrived in Dharamsala and everyone talked about past and future life, I decided I'm not going to believe in it. So consciously I believe this, because mom was always weird in that way, and uh, the rest of it. <laughs> so seriously, I was not like, I, I, I had, it was difficult, you know, when I first encountered Buddhism, because it was always like, no, I'm not believing in that, don't talk about it. Anyway, um, but, so as I'm saying, I'm just trying to say that I wish there, were, there, were any, there weren't any future life, but there may be. Okay? I don't know 100%, I'm very much convinced now, but I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't know. But what my point is, if you live your life as if there were, it's a win-win situation. Now, let me tell you why. Because when we talk about future lives, we talk about happiness. I want to experience happiness in a future life, right? We all do, don't we? So if there is a future life, is there anyone who would like to be born in misery and poverty and... and Lots of suffering. I don't think anyone. No one. No. So how? What can we do? What can I do to have money in this lifetime? I could rob a bank, right? I could do, and maybe I'm lucky, and I can get away with it. So in this lifetime, I can actually secure myself some happiness. Maybe if, if being rich would be something I would like. So a certain financial comfort needs to be there by robbing a bank. But the problem is. If I want to be rich in my next life, I do not want to rob a bank. No way. Acquiring, trying to acquire money by way of, of, of stealing it, by way of dishonest means, will mean the opposite. So, future lives goes hand in hand with the idea of karma. That if I want to have certain things in the future, I need to work on them in this lifetime. So if I want to have friends, I should try and make be kind to people, be honest to people. So there's certain ideas of karma, just a sec. So the idea, for example, if I want to have a certain material comfort, and I'm not talking about being super rich, but to have choices. Because I have a certain financial uh, security, then I should create the causes by being generous. If I want people to trust me, I should be honest. Uh, I should be truthful. I should be natural. I mean, you know, I shouldn't deceive people. Um, if I want to have a healthy life, I shouldn't, uh, I should not uh, harm someone by way of maybe killing them or making them sick intentionally. I'm just giving you some examples. So, therefore, if there are future lives and I live accordingly, that would mean I live according to this idea of karma. Okay, that would, that's what it means. So if I assume there are future lives, so if there are future lives, I'll be relatively okay because I create the causes, potentially, to have what I need. I don't know whether I will, but yeah, I can accumulate a lot of positive potential, karmic potential, and that 
enables me to do that. If there is no future life, let's say there's like the Christian idea, uh, I don't think it exists in Judaism, of heaven and hell. It's not, it doesn't yeah, exist? It does. Oh, it does. Okay, sorry. I, I thought I got that wrong. Anyway, so if I live my life in that way, I probably go to heaven rather than to hell. Or on the in the day when God, what's it called? When the God judgment, judgment, judgment day, um, I probably go with God, right? I mean, I'd probably be okay. And if there is no future life, I have no regrets. So my point is, win-win situation. To live your life as if there were future lives, it's a win-win situation. So for me, that's reason enough to, to therefore try to not uh, do negative actions. And you see, like, I mean, I'm not even talking about altruism and love and compassion. Of course, those are also important. But first, I also need to look after myself and, you know, make sure that I get the happiness that I would like to have. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. It's not even selfish. Selfishness means if I sacrifice everyone else's happiness, for myself to be happy. But I don't need to do that. By making everyone else happy, as a side effect, I get happier. All right, so this is my idea about future lives. So taking that as your starting point, then even if you don't believe in future lives, you don't know 100%, you have at least doubt, as in like, yeah, maybe there are, I don't know, and act accordingly. Does that make sense, to have that attitude? To adopt that attitude, as in like, to think, maybe. No? Why not? Because you, you, you use the word me, me, me. I don't know if it's the same me. Who is me? The, 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 the minimum of remembering my ex life, I don't remember. So what's the me? The me, like the... the I will be reborn. What is the me who will be reborn? Your so consciousness. It's an right hypothesis, but... Your consciousness is reborn. How do you know? I think I'm saying, if something is reborn, if hypothetically, if there were something, then it would be your consciousness. I'm taking that as a possibility, right? It's a possibility, one of two billions, I don't know. Yes, so you take all in those into consideration and thinking that, or at least taking, if, my point is just, if there is future life as one of those two billion possibilities, then it's just a win-win situation to live accordingly. Maybe what is my connection? It may, to him? Maybe it, it, uh, for us, or, uh, it's good to, to think that living according to these values is beneficial even in this life. Yeah. It's yeah. lovely to be kind. This life, oh, it's lovely yeah. for me to be kind to you and for you to be kind to me. So I let's do it. That's yeah. that's okay, that's so a very good point. Training. I've only mentioned at the time of death and afterwards. So yes, even right now. We don't succeed here, we're talking about the future. We hardly do it here. No, no, but that's, that's an incentive to, to do it. Right? It's an incentive to do it. Um, to be kinder, to be more compassionate. I mean, in the end, we do work for our own benefit at this point. Let's not deny it. Not at all, ever. No, no. We I do. We agree with you that yeah. we, we do for, mm -hmm. for here, for this time, for today. Exactly. Yes. Because I realize that it's worth it. It's rewarding today. Right. I agree with this. Mm -hmm. Happy. Yes. But the thing is, like, if you, if it's an incentive, okay, if you just do it because it's good, well, wonderful, right? No, it's, it's rewarding. It's what? It's working. rewarding to do good in this. We're working. Working. It's working. It's working. working. Ah, it's working. It's working. No, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. 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 Rewarding, Ale, is rewarding. Okay, well, not always. If you practice generosity and no one knows you do, still you feel better. Okay, that's wonderful if you feel that way. Okay, so, but still, the idea that just every time you accumulate virtue, for example, purifying negativities, would you be, would you be uh, happy to accumulate, to purify negativities, to engage in activities to purify negativities, you probably wouldn't unless you had a sense uh, there's a future life, right? To regret you, the negative actions you accumulate <coughs> in this lifetime and then engage in positive actions in order to counteract that. If there's a possibility that there is a future life, you'll be more motivated to do that, right? So if there's karma, it would be effective to what's called purify your negativities and accumulate more positive actions. And again, I don't know whether that's rewarding in that moment, but if there really is something afterwards, you'll be better prepared. That's my point. Maybe after the coffee? Probably prepared. Okay. Because it's like threatening. 
Certainly. Oh. It feels to me like a threat. Oh, how? Um, Actions have consequences. You, know, you have to know it, but but not the main reason for you to be to do kind is because it, if you will not, it will come back to you. Okay, so as long you see, as long as there is no attachment, if there's no attachment to the self, you're right. You know, I practice generosity because it's good. I want to help other people. If that is my only and wonderful, that's the best motivation. But right now. Let's accept that there is a mind that cherishes the self. There is a mind like that, and we shouldn't ignore it. If we ignore our own needs at this point, I think that's kind of dangerous. So unless there is something we also get out of it, we probably won't do it. Uh, maybe I will uh, rephrase it. understand what bothers yeah. me. That, yes, please. Um, that I feel like you're trying to convince uh, with, uh, us with this, um, yeah. by showing us it's uh, beneficial for you to believe in it. And, uh, no. and it's, uh -huh. it's not uh, pure. I like, uh, um, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. It's very helpful for me. It's helpful for me because it helps me to adjust accordingly, you see? I mean, I don't want to, I don't, you see this idea of past and future lives? I believe it is truly beneficial to think that I'm not just going to go out of existence afterwards. In other words, I need to be careful if I also want to be happy. It's the same way like the way we live our lives. We live our lives with the thought in mind, one day I'll get a pension. So whatever I do, just in an ordinary worldly kind of way, whatever I do in this lifetime, it will, in this time right now, it will have consequences in the future. My, the way I live healthy. Okay, like the whole organic kind of food, health kind of yoga and so forth is that right now I am healthy, but if I just eat chips and, and hamburgers and so forth, well, in the future I may not live very long, I have high blood pressure and so forth. So I don't know whether I'm going to live until the age of 70. Uh, but if I do, I want to have a healthy body and so forth. And like I say, everyone deserves to be happy. So in the same way as we, just a sec, Luciana, uh, in the same way as I look after myself physically, after my body and so forth, uh, in order to have a healthy body in the future, which I don't think it's selfish, it's just practical. Sense, practical, yeah. So likewise, mentally, I do certain things that when I write now, if you will, then also in the future, I may be more peaceful, I may become kinder and so forth. But if there is future lifetimes, I may be even more careful, as in like even towards when I'm quite old, when I'm older and the time of my death approaches, well, I don't know, maybe it's approaching already now and tomorrow I'm dead, but let's say I live until the age of 80, 90 or whatever, that even then I'm still careful. It's not like, oh, my end, my life is always, let's just eat hamburgers and let's just, no, no, no. I want to keep healthy and I want to also be sure in the future. Yeah. So for that attitude, that's it. So you see, I don't think it's selfish. 
and, and I'm not trying to, to convince you of anything. It's yeah, just saying... No, I didn't say it's selfish. No, 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 you, you didn't. That's true. Uh, but I kind of thought that could be a thought that would arise. Yeah, that I just said it's not... Uh, the best the motivation. High, yeah. Yeah. The highest no, the highest would be I do it just for, because it's great to do. The, because it's wonderful to help all sentient beings and all living beings. That is definitely... like This is uh, unconditional. Right? Not expecting anything back. But honestly, am I there? Am I worried about my future? Yes. I don't want to be upset. I don't want to be miserable in the future. And even for the benefit of all sentient beings, if I can actually develop my mind to a degree that I can be like the Dalai Lama. Do I want to be like the Dalai Lama? Yes. I want to walk into a room and everyone go, hmm. You know, really people feel happy when they're around the Dalai Lama, right? His holiness really makes people happy. People, they have a problem before they meet His Holiness and you meet them afterwards and they go, well, I think my problem is solved. I want to be able to do that, touch people in such a way. Now, if there is future lives, I'm not going to have these qualities in this lifetime. I don't think so. I mean, the causes and conditions, I know my own mind, it's very difficult to change it. Change is slow, just as the body, the physical change is not that quick. So then if I have a next life, I want to have the opportunities to yeah, continue. That's what I took. Yeah. To say. Right? So that you have yes. So you have the opportunities to continue develop your mind. As a practitioner, you want to have a next life uh, to be good and you have uh, money and everything and quality yes. to continue your practice. Exactly. Have opportunities to, to make to choices. Be. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's important, but I wasn't even talking from a practitioner's point of view, but you're right, if you want to really develop more altruism and more kindness and more compassion, if there is a next life, you want the opportunity. You don't want to be born... I, I don't want to be a frog. Because... Uh, a frog? Frog is frog. Yeah, a frog. I don't want to be a frog. How do I know I'm not going to be a frog? Maybe I created a lot of froggy karma. You know, done pretty froggy things, and you know, or like a little doggy or something. Nothing wrong with the dog, but I may forget everything I've learned in this lifetime. I may just forget about it. Be just interested in bones and chasing cats, and then difficult. Or be born in a situation where I have no choices, no education. It'd be difficult. I know my own mind. If I was an altruistic frog, okay, but I'm not. <laughs> See what I'm saying, Luciana? You said when yeah, you say sorry. Something? Yeah. Correct me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also understand that the, we cr also create can create causes in this lifetime that will come after also in this lifetime. Yes, also of course. course. In the same life. They, they can ripen in this lifetime. There's karma that ripens in this lifetime or in many lifetimes after. Yeah. Or both. Yeah. Some ripens because in this lifetime, some in the future. We are talking about the, the following lifetime, but maybe mm -hmm. this one also we can see the consequences of this one that we create. Yes, so true, so true, that's true. But I'm just saying, if the future, if we have the future in mind, we have to accumulate so much positive potential because there's so many future lives possibly ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also don't know which karma. You see, when we talk about karma that may be responsible for a future lifetime, it has to be very powerful, positive karma to be reborn in a, in a state with relative uh, positive kind of conditions. So that makes me more careful and take any opportunity I have to benefit others, to be of benefit to others. If it's with the, with the kind of motivation, like, uh, like the highest motivation that was just mentioned, the motivation of being of greatest benefit to others, I can be of greatest benefit to others if I'm reborn in a state where I can continue, I would say, right, in the future. So this would be the best motivation. I've only mentioned the, 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 the inferior one. But you actually mentioned the higher one, and that just works in the same way. But the point is still, if there are future lives, if there are, we would be best prepared for that. And if there isn't anything, well, at least I live a happy life right now. I'm happy and fulfilled right now. I'm just saying, um, for example, the same idea with organic food. If I have in mind, okay, I really want to be, and Israel has a lot of elderly people. I believe it's the healthy food. I mean, seriously, there's some people that come in and I hear that at 90 or something, like crazy old age, you know, and they're like really fit. And when you eat the food, at the lunch break, I was looking around, but the food people ate, and I was like, wow, in Germany, be fries and, and, and sausage and stuff. And here, the food is so healthy. So there's really, the food that people eat here, 
it's kind of the idea if you want to live a long life, if you think like, okay, I want to live to an old age and be healthy. So you do that in mind and you eat healthy. Well, then if you don't live long life, well, okay, you die early, but at least you die with a body that's relatively in good condition. It's kind of a similar attitude, I'd say. Right? Does that? Yeah. So anyway, yes, please. Sorry, because I was also thinking that uh, when something happens to us in this lifetime, and we yeah. say, why is this something wrong or bad? Uh -huh. We say, oh, why is this happening to me? Or if it's something good, we say, wow, we are happy and we want to continue to continue. So maybe this is also the motivation <laughs> for those nice, good things that make us happy or sure. continue to do things. And if something bad happens to us, or yeah. we did something wrong, right. we don't want this to. We don't want this to continue. So maybe we we change. Because for this lifetime, yeah. but I mean, yes, that's also true. But like I'm saying, I think your determination is not as strong mm -hmm. if you just think for this lifetime, mm -hmm. right? And it's actually possible to gain certain things in this lifetime by means of negative possible like I could I said you can cheat your insurance and have a little bit more money you can get away with it and you may go oh yeah that's actually wrong but these guy with all that insurance money you know they have too much anyway so we kind of justify in that way I remember when I was when I was younger when I was uh, before I met Buddhism I would uh, shoplift like I, I, I believe I'm born with a tendency to steal I seriously, I was such a good thief since I was little you know it started with my parents stuff and then as I grew older I shoplifted I was caught a couple of times, but I, I was very good at lying too, so I was kind of got around that too. And I, I thought it was fun, and I never stole, I stole from my parents, okay, but it wasn't that much. Uh, but then when I stole from stores, I thought, oh, these owners, they have too much. You know, <laughs> all these ways of like, I'm taking what's the people's, you know, I'm taking what's actually mine. And I don't know, I had these warped kind of ideas. So I never felt bad about it. I felt clever. Now I'm making things right. Someone could uh, help you uh, realize that you're damaging yourself. Don't have to. What am I damaging myself? I'm not damaging myself. I'm taking what's right for the people. <laughs> and those people who steal from us, I, I'm setting karma right. They steal from the people and I'm taking from them. I'm bringing justice. You know, like I had this attitude. Robin Hood. Yeah, I'm like a Robin Hood. I was like a modern day Robin Hood, except I never gave it to anyone. I just. <laughs> <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Like, I can kind of, you know, kind of make my own kind of philosophy of it. Whereas if I, if I had the idea, okay, there's karma, and maybe future lives, if I take from people, I'll be taken. That's it. And I don't want that. I'm just saying, for me personally, somehow that works. Okay. But again, I'm just, I can only share with you what works for me. And then I've had these incredibly beautiful suggestions that came in. Uh, Alan uh, made some very good suggestions of things that were very different to what I said. Very beautiful. So you may hear something else. I'm just sharing something that has worked for me. Um, uh, I don't know if it's, a, it's another idea that yes. I want to learn. Please. And for me, it really worked. Okay. Me. Yes, yes. But it's what I said before. It's yeah. like um, um, there's a, a Jewish scholar that uh -huh. says uh, that um, um, the worst punishment uh -huh. you can get yes. um, for doing something bad, like yeah. uh, killing or something like that. Uh -huh. The worst punishment you can get uh -huh. is the crime itself. Uh -huh. I don't know, uh, it, says it, it says it better than me, <laughs> but uh -huh. the idea is... Uh -huh. um, the worst thing is that you've done it, you've, you've done it, you've done yeah, it. Okay. The, 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 Knowing that uh -huh. you corrupted your soul. Uh -huh. okay. Knowing, and, and this is like the worst punishment. Okay. Not the, I don't know. Uh, if you can see that way, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you can see I, that I way, really that's very beautiful. I, I love this idea very much yeah. because I feel that it's. Um, you've, you've corrupted yourself. You've, you've, you've been, you've been un dishonest to yourself. It doesn't matter what you do to others. It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter that. Uh, I don't know, they are rich and uh -huh. you took their money and you're doing justice. It doesn't matter what you did now uh -huh. to What's yourself. Negative? You made yourself okay. um, behave in a, a negative lower, way. Okay. Know, something like this. That yes, yes. You, I, I, I think I understand what you mean. 
So just being dishonest that you yourself have corrupted yourself. I mean, maybe for someone else that really works, but still it could be future lives. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's still a possibility that despite having corrupted myself, I may have to experience. So I'm just saying, don't totally ignore the idea. Ah. <laughs> yeah. What? Where, where? What is this place? <laughs> it's like half an hour jump in like five minutes. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yes, time flies when you're having fun. Except we haven't even come to the topic I was going to meditate on. Okay, never mind. I'll find something else. All right. What time was it supposed to finish? Half an hour ago, right? 3.30. Sorry. Half an hour ago. Never mind. We're never mind. Minutes and then one hour. Yeah, we'll change it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let Stay me just... here all night, so. We can be here all night. So I just wanted to introduce this idea, but of course I had to introduce the idea of past and future lives in the sense of uh, the first topic after the precious uh, after the, 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 the teacher is the topic of appreciating our precious human life, appreciating the opportunities we have at this point. So this is seen as a very important topic. Number one, as an as an antidote to sadness. Right? Sometimes we focus in on the negative, on our problems, we focus more on that instead of focusing on how fortunate we actually are. Such amazing opportunities being born in Israel. I mean, I think it's very fortunate. I'm not saying everyone who's born in, in Israel is fortunate, but as in like in every country, I know there are people in Germany who have no choices, who have no freedoms, but I think everyone in this room the fact that you could take time off and come to a course like this, uh, interested in transforming your mind, interested in hearing something spiritual, it shows an incredible degree of uh, fre freedom. Freedom, yeah, I mean, positive karma, of course, as a result of actions we've done in the past, but also a lot of freedom, a lot of opportunity. So there is a way in rejoicing in what we have. And what it does is, first of all, feeling sad, feeling depressed. And of course, people are depressed for different reasons. It can have chemical reasons, of course. I'm not saying that uh, every depression is brought forth by focusing on the negative, but there's sadness and depression when we just focus more on what's wrong in our life. So this gives us an opportunity to focus on what's right in our life. How incredibly fortunate we are. We are healthy. We take health for granted, but I remember the few times I was sick in Dharamsala, for example, every time I got better, the first day I got better, I always rem remember them as the happiest days in India. I remember once I, I, I hurt my hand, and when I didn't have my hand, I realized how difficult it was to get dressed, and trust me, this skirt with one hand, whoa, well, the uh, texture knows. Is it texture? Yeah, sorry. Tech Joe knows what I'm talking about. Sorry, I get confused. He knows what I'm talking about. I mean, just getting dressed is so difficult. Everything is difficult. Or if you live in a certain place and you have to climb up the mountain, very difficult if you have a, a hurt foot. So we never really think how lucky we are we have two hands. How lucky we are we have two feet. How lucky we are we have our teeth. And if we don't have all our teeth, we have the means to get an artificial, you know, if, you, if you're missing five teeth, and you can't afford the, the, what do you call them, dentures? Bridge. Huh? Bridge. Bridges? You can't afford? Yeah? If you can't afford those, he knows the names. Um, <laughs> oh my god, your favorite food? Forget it. No more pita for you. No more pita bread. I mean, the things we enjoy so much in life, and we never think how fortunate we are we can enjoy them. Right? You're, you're not too sick to have hummus and trina and, and falafel and Israeli salad and shashuka and the whole thing. Right? How lucky we are. If we, we, there's just a little thing that has to be wrong with us. So sometimes I, I start thinking like when my arm is not okay and then the first day I got better. Oh my god, I put dress on my dress in like two minutes. Five minutes. It takes a little longer than, your, than jeans, trust me. But... <laughs> Yeah, I could do it and those, oh my god, I'm so lucky I got my both hands. I can be so, I mean, if I didn't have my arm, if I had one arm missing, the things I worry about now, would I still worry about them? I don't think so. A lot of the things I worry about on a daily basis, I wouldn't worry about if I was missing an arm. And I have my both arms. 
sometimes think about that. We take it for granted, but we don't rejoice enough in what we do, what we have. Our healthy body. I'm relatively healthy. I don't have schizophrenia to such a degree. Maybe I have, but not to such a degree that I cannot come to Israel. I can, I can do things. I don't have certain mental diseases that, I mean, I'm so lucky. So really just make a list of the things that I don't have and therefore I'm so lucky. So that's the first topic. And that gives you a sense of appreciation, a sense of not being caught in sadness and, oh, my life sucks and, oh, you know, like being depressed. No, to appreciate what I have. So what does a person that does have schizophrenia supposed to think? I'm working with them, so... <laughs> other things that they have. You know, I'm, I'm taking an example. Other things. I have certain other things that I'm lacking, right? There's other things that they... Still, they have arms and legs, right? I mean, they have still... A hell, they have a human mind, not a frog mind. I mean, so much more you can do. And often people with uh, schizophrenia have other talents that I don't have, for example. So anyway... The situation we have to appreciate what we have because we're familiar with that. Yeah. And I'm saying it's not just, I mean, there's so many other things. I'm not saying if you have schizophrenia, you're in trouble. And otherwise, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying if you have if you're one arm missing, then you can't have done ever precious your own life. But I'm you just, are saying that some situations are better than others. Yes. Nahon? <laughs> Okay, good question. Where is this question. coming from? Good question. That's very Israeli. I love that. <laughs> She's so right. Right away she goes at the logic. Why? Because if I want to enhance spiritually, right, I need to have determination. I need to be able to, and you can, it doesn't matter what, anything that helps you to transform your mind. I'm saying with my arm, this is just an example. You see, when I'm, when I'm stuck into, when I'm stuck into unhappiness, when I just look at the negative parts of my life, suddenly the things that I take for granted, such as having two legs, right? I can act, I mean, what do I worry about? There's something much more to worry about if I didn't have you know, two legs. I'm just saying, for those people who, who miss one leg, well, they find other ways of, 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 of dealing with this. But right now, in my situation, there's nothing wrong with, with, with missing a limp. But I'm saying, look at me right now and don't just take it for granted to appreciate what I have. The blessing, count my blessings, in other words. That's what I'm trying to say. But why? Because then I'm, I'm, I, I generate the determination to do something with my life, to use this potential I have, the opportunities I have, to transform my mind, to not waste time, in other words. This is meant to be, the, the purpose of this exercise is to be determined to do something with my life, as long as I have it. Because if I die, let's say, in a year, and I'll be reborn as a little frog, until then, I have a year. And we have this talent to procrastinate. <coughs> I very much do. Oh yeah, I, I, I'll meditate more, I'll, I'll think more of these positive states next year. Right now, I'm a little busy with other things. No, to not procrastinate but rather to make opportunity of what we have right now, to rejoice in what we have. It gives us some energy, some determination, and to not postpone, because I don't know when I'm going to die. So to recognize the opportunities we have, right? Of course, if we didn't have them, we would have to find other ways, but right now, we have these opportunities, I myself have those, and to utilize them to the best of my abilities, to not waste them because I don't know how long I have them. So this is what we start off with, these two topics. The first topic, topic appreciating the precious human life we have. We are not reborn with an existence that could potentially keep us or make it much harder to transform our mind. Instead, it makes it harder. So right now, it's relatively easy. As long as it's that easy, let's work on it and be aware we could die any minute. One thing in life that is certain is death. I know it sounds harsh, I know it sounds terrible, but it's true. The one thing in life that is, that is certain is our own death. And no matter how old you are, you could die anytime. I could die tomorrow. I don't know whether I'm gonna, what comes first, tomorrow or my own death. Right? So again, whatever opportunities I have to be aware, they may not last. And therefore, that's, it's said to be a, um, 
it's used, this idea is used, and this is realistic. I'm not making anything up here. I mean, unless you disagree and you, we, we could debate it, but am I right about the opportunities we have, all of us here? Secondly, am I right about we could die anytime? So to not spoil us, to not waste our opportunities. Those are the two topics mentioned uh, at the very beginning, and I'm thinking to do my meditations on them, so I better introduce them before we have the meditation. So those are the, the, the first two major topics after uh, relying on a spiritual teacher. Okay, so let's leave it at that. Um, we're over time already. So how can we just rearrange our timing here? 20 minutes break. 20 minutes break. So until 4.30 we have a break. We have time to go to the bathroom, have some tea or coffee. Um, and then what comes next? Break. Meditation. Okay, so meditation. Meditation in any order you like. Uh, which one do you prefer? Meditation first or? Yeah, meditation. Okay, meditation first. Okay. Um, I'm going to do an analytical meditation. Uh, so I introduce this technique to you. But okay, then anyway, so let's do at uh, 4.30, we do meditation. Okay. Yeah. Oh.